They just aren't telling you the truth and protein is not bad for your hair. Let me tell you why. Hello and welcome to the world of Craig. Yes, that's me, I'm Craig and this is my channel where we get into all things hair and sometimes a little bit of beauty, a rather serious splash. That's what I call the very beginning intro of the videos. I've been getting a lot of questions recently about protein and hair and if it's bad. Spoiler alert, let's get straight into it. It is not, but I'm going to tell you exactly why, what over-proteinization could be, where it comes from. You know, it's just worth mentioning from the get-go that I suspect I know exactly what post or whose post that people have been seeing and I'm, I'm guessing that some of them have blown up. It might surprise you blown up as in got out right out there so everyone's seen them. It might surprise you to know that I don't look at a lot of hair con content because I don't want to be influenced in the sort of content that I make. And it's great here on my channel that when a lot of people start asking me a question, I can make a video and I can answer it. I have covered this before in a recent myth busting video and there's a couple of short form videos that also talk about hair and protein. But you know, very interestingly, when I did a bit of digging, there are a couple of people who are really jumping on the bandwagon of like, protein is bad, and we're gonna get into all of the reasons why, and you know, I'm gonna explain everything, and also give you some product examples so that I can make it really clear about formulations and why protein is not bad. But when I did a bit of digging, the posts that, that they had really gone to town on were sponsored. <gasps> so, you know, this post is not sponsored. Nothing here on my, on my channel, that's where I am, is sponsored. I do have a contract with Clairol to break, make educational content, but you're never gonna see me hold something up and say, I like this or this is bad, so use this. Anyway, let's get into it. Now, before we get into protein, as I do say in all of my videos, if you enjoy this and find it helpful, you know exactly what to do. You doing any of those things means that my content will get pushed out to more people. I love my community over here on my channel. It's a big deal for me to be able to make this content for you and for us to have a community. So if you're new here, hello. And if you're coming back for another look, hello. You guys are all incredible. You folks are all incredible and yeah have to say that in the video at some point. Now, protein. I would suspect that the myth, the long-standing myth, with, I'm not talking here about the influencers who are making this content and frightening everybody. You have no, honestly, you have no reason to be frightened. I'm gonna explain to you why. But I'm guessing that the myths, the very historical myths about protein being bad, come from back in the day when I was a very young hairdresser in the 80s. Yes, I've been doing it that long. And we had pro products, products from companies like Redkin and Lamar and Nexus and other brands that had a lot of protein in them. And they were basically just protein treatments. If you're a hair professional that's been doing it as long as I have, you will, I'm sure you will be aware of these products. I have scoured the internet to try to find images to insert in this video, but I can't find any anywhere. So you will know what I'm talking about. And those products were pretty much pure protein. A few other things, but they were protein. Some of them were animal protein. Yikes. That doesn't get into put, put into any products now, thank goodness. But some of them were. I remember using them. I remember them smelling really horrible. And I remember them having the propensity to make hair feel very brittle. Okay, remember that. Hair feeling very brittle. Those products don't exist now. But that's one of the things that creates this myth. Apart from the influencers who are doing it for money at the end of the day. And also to, to really give people the heebie-jeebies. So, but hair is made of keratin. It's amino acids, it's keratin protein, okay? Our hair is around 80% keratin. It has lots of other things in it, you know, that make it up like water. Hair has a constant moisture con uh, content of eight to 12%, otherwise it wouldn't be hair. But it is keratin, okay, which is protein. Right, what is the over-proteinization that I mentioned there that doesn't happen anymore. It's also worth mentioning, following on from that, that keratin is what gives hair its flexibility, its elasticity and its strength. Because it makes up 
80 and over percent of the hair itself, that's what is the kind of body, if you like, the, the structure of the hair, and that is why it's important. Okay, over proteinization from back in the day is if you put too much protein on the hair and it wasn't balanced, remember that, more coming up in a second, it wasn't balanced with moisture because hair also has this moisture content in it, which is constant, okay? Hair doesn't really need to be moisturized as such, that's a marketing term. You don't really need to add water to hair because there's always water in it, if that makes sense. That does make sense. But when things were over proteinized, it would make the hair brittle. So I really do remember, I remember clients coming in for protein treatments and their hair not feeling great afterwards. So then we used to have to use something that had moisture in it or would even mix up things. Okay, so that is what, to over proteinize hair, if you if you had something that was pure protein and you kept applying it and applying it and applying it and applying it, it might, might, might make the hair brittle. But that doesn't happen in 2025. It hasn't happened for a long time. And this is why. So before I share with you some formulas from the drugstore and also some bougie products to help us understand what is the crux of this video, Modern formulas, and I've met the chemists, they are brilliant people, no one is trying to do you over, no one is trying to snap your hair off, etc, etc. Modern formulas, if they contain protein, will also have moisture giving ingredients. Now, hair doesn't technically need moisturising because it has a constant moisture level, but that means that these modern formulations that do contain some protein, in order to make to help to rebuild hair because it is the building block of hair at the end of the day are balanced they are balanced formulas they're not like the ones back in the day or they're not like some people are trying to tell you that they are that they're going to over proteinize your hair it's also worth mentioning at this point that some products contain proteins because proteins are a really great carrier delivery system for other things. For example, creatine's molecular leave-in mask. I remember some chatter online where people were saying, well, it's got wheat protein in it. Yes, it has. It's right down the ingredients list because that wheat protein helps to carry the peptide into the cortex of the hair. So, you know, if you see things on Reddit or online or people tell you things that that's got wheat in it, protein, or it's got this protein in it, so it's going to break your hair off, it definitely isn't going to break your hair off because those formulas are balanced. Right, let's look at these examples. Very important to mention here before I get into these products that if hair is breaking off, I can almost certainly guarantee you that it is not from protein in products. It's probably heat mechanical damage as in tugging the hair when it's damp when hair is damp or wet it's very fragile very fragile especially if it's chemically treated if it's over processed the hair might be breaking etc 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 use products that will make the hair slippery if you're worried about breakage things that have amadimethicone in you know use products that make the hair strong that build the hair up but it won't be over proteinization. Yay! Right, let's have a look at some shampoos. First of all, a drugstore one, we're gonna whiz through these. Bond repair, bond protein repair, sorry, from OGX. Now this is interesting, it demonstrates it straight away. We can see in the formula it has weak protein, oh yes, but then also it has glycerin, which is moisturizing. It has panthenol too, which is also, also moisturizing. It has citric acid for the pH, which also will help to make the hair stronger. It has fragrance, very high up the ingredient list, ingredients list. It has amadimethicone, which will make the hair slippy. It's a balanced formula from the drugstore. Let's go bougie, let's have Orbe's Hair Alchemy. Uh, yeah, was, I've actually used the, the leave-in conditioner in that line, it's really gorgeous. 50 pounds for some shampoo. Now this has a really huge ingredients list. It's absolutely crackers how big this ingredients list. It's got some really interesting things in there like the Cruternium 95, which is really moisturizing, very slippery. But this does, it's got Polycruternium 73, which makes the hair very slippery as well. Citric acid for the pH. 
It does have some protein in there as well to make, you know, to help to build the hair up. But it's very bad. It's a very, very balanced formula. It, just looking at this again now, it's crackers. Huh? It's got, yeah, I've got, there's some other moisturizing ingredients in there. Hydrolyzed rice, rice protein for the, for the protein. That's a plant-based protein, obviously, because it comes from rice. Very, very hard to over-proteinize the hair with anything that comes from a plant. Probably the biggest ingredient system I've ever seen. But I mean, all based, in, their formulas are lovely, but they are very, very pricey. Right, now let's look at conditioners. Speedy, speedy, let's have two conditioners. Starting off with the drugstore, we have Pantene's Bond Repair Intensive Treatment. Now this is an interesting one, and I've kept that this in here for a reason, and that's because this has protein-derived ingredients, okay? So it has glutamic acid, it also has histidine, and they are both amino acids that are the building blocks of protein. So it doesn't contain protein itself, but it has the building blocks of protein. It also has panthenol in it, which is a moisturizer. And what else have we got in there? It has, uh, that, has that glutamic acid. It's quite a simple formula, really, to be honest. It's got biotin, biotin doesn't do anything for the hair if it's applied topically. And if you're gonna take a biotin supplement, be careful because if you have your bloods done, if you have any bloods done, it can mean if you're taking a high dose of biotin, it can mean that the, that the results won't be as they should be, something to bear in mind. I'm not a chemist, I don't formulate products, but I do work in R&D and I am obsessed with what goes into products. Then we have, um, I thought we'd have something really popular from Redkin, which is their Allsoft conditioner. Now, Allsoft is technically something that people use that have very textured hair. But it, interestingly enough, when I was doing my research, this does contain, if I can get that, make that bigger so that I can see, where is it down here? I know, hydrolyzed soy protein. So another plant-based protein right down the list. So it has a very small amount, but then this also has lots of ingredients that, that are moisturizing. It has arginine as well, which is gorgeous. It has the arginine is an amino acid, which makes the hair strong. Then it has, um, I think that's peach kernel oil, which will be very moisturizing. It has hydrolyzed vegetable protein as well, again, to give the hair that strength. But it's an all round, but it's also got palm oil, which gives the hair lots of slip. But it is, again, a balanced, formula. You see, there's a pattern forming here. Let's have, that was Fast and Furious, let's have a conclusion, okay? It won't be protein in hair care that's making anyone's hair be brittle or snap or damaging it. It is, as I've already said, heat, you know, chemical treatments, mechanical damage, like it really makes me wince when I see people, you know, on, on the internet, that's the one, like dr dragging a brush through really wet hair and being really aggressive. It will snap your hair and if your hair is color treated, it will snap it more. Use products that are slippery, that give the hair slip. So if you're not using a conditioner, maybe a bit of a leave-in conditioner, things that have amidimethicone in them, dimethicone, silicone is not the devil. It's a brilliant ingredient and it, you know, amidimethicone, if your hair is negatively charged, which is what happens when the hair is damaged, amidimethicone is positively charged and it attaches to those negatively charged bits and helps to make it smooth. And last but by no means least, don't listen to people that aren't being truthful. You know, I know it's really hard and I know it's tricky because we're bombarded by all of this stuff, but there are people that don't do their research, that don't have the knowledge, and at the end of the day, just want to frighten people. And that's what it is. You know, they want to put misinformation out there to frighten people to get clicks or to ultimately to sell something, to make a commission or to get a brand deal or anything like that. Controversial yet bold. Goodness me. I have to watch, I'm not struck by influencer lightning. A huge thank you if you've got to the end of the video. Do you have any questions or comments that I can help you with? Any questions or comments? Any questions that I can help you with? Leave them in the comments. I will always get back to you. I reply to everybody, okay? Has this been helpful? Has it dispelled some of those myths and, those, and taken some of the fear away? I really hope so, but let me know in the comments. You all take lots of care and I'll see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.